Hello everyone, Linda Israel here, and today I'm going to show you how to make some pockets for your junk journals using some gel prints and other elements like book pages and some journal cards that were already cut. So let's get started here. Right off the bat, I have a 5x7 gel print. This was probably one where I was either cleaning off the plate or I was just kind of playing around with colors. So there isn't a pattern on here, it's just color. And I want to add a pattern. So I've got one of my stencils. This is from the November Stencil Club. It's a monthly membership that I have in my website where you get four different images of stencils a month that are cut into three different stencil designs. I'm going to lay this out here and I've got Mermaid Lagoon Distress Oxide and I have one of these oval makeup brushes. Though I'll have some links in the description box if you're looking for these brushes because I found them on Amazon. Really inexpensive and they work perfectly for mixed media stuff. So what I'm going to do is I've got a couple of pieces of washi tape. I'm just going to washi tape this in place so that it doesn't move around too much on me anyway. And we're going to pick up some of this Mermaid Lagoon and I'm going to rub it over that gel print. And it may not seem like I'm doing a whole lot at the moment, but it's going to add a little bit of a pattern onto our gel print here. All right, well, while I still have the stencil down, I've got some Dazzling Diamonds Tattered Angels. This one's almost empty, so I'm going to shake it up, try to get a little bit out of there. And I'm going to spritz right over the top of that Distress Oxide. So it's going to react just a little bit, and it'll be kind of a fun layer that we'll have. I'm going to remove the stencil, and we have a little bit of a pattern. You see that? It's not real dark. It's just a slight pattern. I'm going to go ahead and dry this with my heat tool so that it won't be wet when we go to cut it. All right, so that's pretty much dry, and I'm going to set this aside just a moment. I've got another book page here, and it has already been trimmed to be five and a quarter inches wide. Most of my journals that I make are made using eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper folded in half. And when that is done, it's eight and a half tall by five and a half wide. So I like to make my pockets just a little bit smaller than the actual journal page. So what I'm going to do is looking at this book page and coming down, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect, but you want to be consistent so you know what your measurements are. One, two, three, four. Oh, let's go four and three quarters of an inch. So I'm just using my cutting mat here as a guide. And I'm going to fold that back. And then this piece here, I know I want to be just slightly bigger than an inch. So if I kind of gauge here. So now I've made the beginnings of my pocket base. So when we glue this down on the sides, we'll be able to stick something in here. And if we glue down on the side across the bottom, we'll be able to use right behind this. So I did this first because I need to cut up this gel print and I need to know how big to make the piece to go here. And I found that if I kind of look at this, if I make a two and a half inch by five inch strip, it will fit right in there. So let me show you what I mean. Okay, so I've got my gel print here and all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trim off the white area, the book page that didn't get the paint. Sometimes I save these pieces to collage with, sometimes I don't. I'll just make a pile and when I get tired of that pile, I do something with it. All right, so we know that this area up here, I want approximately five by two and a half. So I'm going to cut a two and a half inch strip. And that strip's going to go right up here. Okay. And then I need a strip here and a strip there. And I already know that if I cut one inch strips, those will fit perfectly on there. And I've got this piece left, which is a a little over two inches, about two and a quarter inches. So I'm going to go in here and about not quite one and a quarter of an inch, about one and just shy of a quarter. And we'll cut this in half. All right, so I've got all these little pieces here. 
You can see I got five pieces out of that five by seven gel print. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp on the edges. I've got the shabby stitches. There's a set of four rubber stamps in this set, and I've got one of them. I don't know. It kind of looks like a zipper to me, but I like the way this stitch pattern looks, and I'm going to stamp it. Oh, I didn't need to stamp it across the bottom. I keep forgetting that I don't need to because you can't see it. But I do need to stamp this top and the sides. And that piece is going to go up here. I guess if I push it up a little bit further, you'll see the stamping across the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and repeat the process with these. These two pieces are going to go on these five four by six journal cards. So I'm just going to line them up across the top here. And then I'm just going to cut those to be the same size as the journal card. And then I'm going to stamp on them. Now that I've got all the stamping done, I'm going to use some Distress Ink. This is Walnut Stain, and I'm going to go around all the pieces. All right, so I've gone all around the pieces with Distress Ink. I even made sure that I did the bottom here on this edge so you get that really nice vintage look to it. But we're going to do it with a pop of color, of course. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start gluing the elements together. So I'm just kind of centering it at the top here, and I'm going to glue this piece down. This is a great way to use those book pages, use those gel prints. You know, even those gel prints that you're kind of like, oh, I like the color, but the pattern didn't turn out. Or, you know, it's kind of hard to see the pattern in it. When you cut it up like this, you get a pop of color. And you don't really have to worry about too much of the pattern that's on there. I'm gluing it as close to the bottom down here so that it kind of still covers it up. And you have this little bit of a border on your book page. I'm going to go ahead and glue this piece all the way down so you get that nice layered look. And then I'm going to glue this piece to the back, and that makes our pocket. Okay? It's kind of funny that the sentence right here, it says, I didn't think you'd want to make a trip to the cemetery, so... <laughs> Sometimes your book pages, you got to look at them to see what the words are. <laughs> and these, I'm just going to glue them right across the top. So now we've got a pocket that you'll be able to put a journal card here. And then you have a spot right behind as well. So you can have two pockets there if you like. Just glue down the side and across the bottom when you go to put it in your journal. And then you have two journal cards. So I wanted to share with you just a quick way to use some gel prints. I'm not going to embellish these yet until I get ready to put it in my journal. Then what I can do is I can pick some more rubber stamps or some calico collage digital images and paste on here to make it match my theme. But right now I've got these ready made so that I can use them. Let me show you another set that I made. This was using a peach gel print. This one had a good pattern on it. So I just went ahead and used it the way that it was. And I think I have one more here. I do. And then here's one where the gel print in the background just had ivory and peach. And I used a stencil that had a little bit of stuff on it. I had even changed the color thinking that I would get a different color. And it blended. And this is what ended up happening. And that's how those turned out. So I hope you enjoyed a quick tutorial on using those gel prints to make some pockets for your junk journals. I hope that you did enjoy this. If you did, give this video a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Know that I go live on Mondays at 3.45 p.m. Central Standard Time and again on Thursdays at 12.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. Do check out the description box below for links to the products that I use as well as my Facebook Instagram, Twitter, my Facebook groups, where you can connect with me on other social medias. What else? Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Have a fabulous day. Bye.